I'm Tim, and I'm giving you a quick demonstration today on how to use the Breville Barista Express, Express Espresso machine here at, uh, at our office today. And uh, it's a great machine that we've got here. Um, for those who have never used this before, um, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how to be able to use this machine quickly and efficiently and to be able to get a great tasting coffee. So first of all, we can start by the tank in the back, the reservoir tank. You can, can easily take that in and out like so to refill up. Just make sure there's enough in there between minimum to maximum. This is okay for now, but do ensure that whoever is if you're using it amongst uh, an office or at the home, that you keep it full. And you can just lock it in quite simply like so. Secondly, make sure you've got enough beans in your, uh, in your reservoir, in the hopper, sorry, so which comes down into your grinder like so. Um, and then put the cap back on to keep the beans as fresh as possible for in here. Next, we've got the grinder settings to here, which we'll talk more about in a moment. But firstly, before we even try using this machine, we have to ensure that we turn it on by this power button right here. So we turn that on. Give it a few minutes to be able to warm up. Luckily for us today that it's already warm. We've been working on it. So we have here, firstly, the porter filter, which comes with two baskets. You can just like so peel it out, make life easier for yourself than trying to peel it out with your fingers. So we have a, a single basket, like so, and a double basket. So you would need to adjust your grind on the on the side of the of the machine here uh, accordingly to ensure that you're not gonna have too much pressure um, when you, if you choose a single or double shot, depending on how you like your coffee. You may find that you may need to adjust your, your grind size more coarse because of the way that the different shapes are with these particular uh, port, uh, these baskets as you can see here with this cone shaped one it's like the water's going to channel more in this direction so it's going to create more pressure so um, it's, in, it's important that you adjust your grind size accordingly okay so we have the porter filter I'm going to use the uh, the, sink, the double basket today and we can obviously choose uh, here where the filter size is. You can choose either your single or your double, and you can actually adjust your dosage amount here by just turning the knob and uh, to be able to get the right amount that you're looking for. So you put the porter filter in, into this section here right now, which um, is where the grind will come through, and you can simply just give it a push like so. And if you want, you can always push it again to stop it manually. If it, if it hasn't stopped already, get the uh, to get the dosage you're looking for. You can see it's quite mounted at the moment on in in the basket. So what we need to do before you you grab what we call the tamp like this and push it down, or even slide it sideways to to get rid of the excess. What I would recommend you do is uh, you just give it a bit of a bash. You just put the, put the neck over on the side here. Don't hit it on the spouts because otherwise you'll get old coffee in your spout and that, that coffee grinds will get into your coffee. Just take it like this and just give it a bit of a whack on here to keep it clean. If you need to, you can always come on this mat and it's harder surface. Whack it down like so. All right, this looks like it's a little, little bit under doses now. You see it's fallen quite heavily there. So I might just give it a tiny bit more. Like so, and then just give it a bit more of a whack. And then I slide it towards me, just up, to be able to cover that off, and then backwards again. And just maybe get a little bit of whack there to make sure. Now, make sure you clean all your grinds off from all the edges, so, and obviously the neck as well, because you don't want those grinds getting into your coffee. So make sure the spout is clean too, because you might actually have a little, quite a grinds down here from the mess we're making. So this is called a tamper or a tamp. So what we'll do, find a clean spot to put your tamp down, put it in your hands like this, with, between your thumb and your forefinger, and use this action by keeping your elbow up, like so, and then just lean into it with your body weight, giving it a little bit of squeeze and uh, a little bit of a push and weight into it. But uh, from here, yep, you might have a little bit of grind, so just give it a bit of a shake and just push your tampon. You wanna, and just make it nice and flat, like so. And you wanna try to keep that as even as possible with, the, with your tamp. So once you finish that, whatever you do, don't knock it like this, otherwise what it'll do is you'll get channeling and the water will go down, uh, won't actually, uh, pressurize through your coffee grinder it will go down it will find it's a path of least resistance and the same goes if you don't give your coffee a bit of a tap if it's done right you better tip it upside down like so you know it's it's not going to fall out okay so 
with coming to to brewing your coffee. Firstly, before I uh, put this into what this place here called the group head, I'll take my cup, warm it up with a bit of hot water because I don't want to shock my espresso cold straight away. So you turn this knob away from you like this and just turn it back towards you to shut it off at uh, 12 o'clock. Just leave that on top there to, to keep warming up. And then in the group head, before I put the porter filter in the group head, I just give the, the group head a slight purge because all the old coffee grinds from last person who was using it will fall out until it starts making that really louder noise like that more water will come through and we'll stop it like so so you can you can hit the button on and off as long as much as you like you better turn it on and off put in the uh, uh, insert the water filter like so and give it a twist and try to make it firm but don't pull it too hard because there's an o-ring in there and this being used 30 or 40 times in a day will end up wearing out your port of your uh, uh, the o-ring or the, the rubber seal in there quite quickly and once you've done that take your cup just uh, empty the hot water from out it should be nice and warm now just sit that underneath like so and then hit for a double shot so technically speaking we should have about uh, 30 mils for a double shot. And you can see here now on the espresso range, probably gone a little too heavy on that one, but still around two o'clock. But as you can see here, the water's not flowing out 100% out of the, uh, or flowing out uh, fast enough from the grime. It'll start backing off a little bit, which will be, be okay. And uh, as the water starts flowing through a bit more. But if you have that too much pressure going, to, or too much pressure high, you get it quite a, a, a bit of coffee. If it's too less, it means the water's flowing through too quickly and you're not getting enough extraction from your coffee. So that's come back now. That shouldn't be too bad for, the, uh, for this particular espresso. And you can see here, a really, really nice crema. And when you see that crema and all the falling, and it's falling like so, you know you got yourself a really nice shot. So I'll leave that on top of the machine to stay warm. So next, what you want to do is clean it, clean your porter filter like so, all right? And you, you know it's good because it'll be quite dry. Uh, the, what, the coffee biscuit or coffee puck, you just give it a nice firm whack and it should come out like so, all right? And then what we do from this point is, once this is full, we give it a, a clean in here first. This is very important, otherwise you'll block the drain with coffee grinds. So I'll just give that a little rinse in, in there as well thereafter. Make sure it's clean for the next person now. And just obviously pull it out and just give it a bit of a shake to get all the old coffee out from there as well. Leave that to one side, for example. Next, we'll, we'll steam our coffee, steam our milk, sorry. So where I fill this up for the milk, if we're making a latte, is I would fill this up like so to about the edge, the edge of where the, the mouth starts forming on the pitcher, on this thing called the pitcher here. Let me just put this away, keep it nice and cool. I'll move the, the smasher or hammer, whatever they call that. <laughs> um, and so this is called uh, the, the steaming wand, and this is the, the, the steaming nozzle, and then we have the knob on the side here, for, or the valve. So what, what you need to do for this one is turn it towards you, and this light here should start turning on. Make sure it's firm towards you, otherwise um, the steam may not work properly. And the reason why we want to um, have the steam running out of the wand first is because we want to get rid of the the excess water out of out of the nozzle or out of the wand here because you're going to make your your milk quite watery once you've purged it and a lot of steam coming out just back it off quickly take our pitcher like so and you want to hold it with this hand like so and have your hand underneath it because we want to check the temperature as we're steaming the milk. Now, you want to aim to have it at this particular angle, but then push to one side. You can do it like this way as well, but you're going to be too close to the edge, um, and maybe it might not heat properly, but it's better to have it like flat, like this to one side, and then when you're actually heating the milk, you can push it down a bit further. When you're heating the milk onto one side, you want to have just the nozzle just underneath the surface, not too deep like so, and you don't want it too much out of the water where it's going, making too much noise and fluffing like so. So we'll, we'll start steaming. Make sure that's turned all the way. 
Oh. I think it's trying to steam some more. So you're looking for a bit of a noise where it's going type noise because that's that's perfect for be able to get what we want is um, micro foam and we don't want big bubbles we want very small bubbles in your in your in your milk so you can see it's doing, doing that circular action within the milk that means uh, it's going to aerate the milk quite well and you're going to see that micro foam start forming Starting to get warm now. All right, now it's getting quite warm. And then I'll just turn it off. Like so. Now it's not too bad that microphone. It's probably probably could have been a little more, but it's fine. So most importantly, after we've after we've created our our, our milky our microphone milk. We have to clean the wand, most importantly. Give it a good old clean, make sure there's no excess milk on there, and then give it a good old purge after as well, so there's no milk inside the actual nozzle itself. That's what we need to do. So that's a big one there, keeping that clean. So now we've got our milk like so. There's a few bubbles in there, so what we just need to do is just give it a little bit of a whack on a hard surface, and give it a, a swell. And if you're wanting to do a good latte, or do, trying to aim for some latte art. I'm not an expert at latte art, by the way, but we'll give it a go. Let's keep it staring, like so, and then take it on a 45 degree angle and go a little bit higher. Give it a bit of a stir in, and once you've done that, then rest and push. Oh, fail, fail, fail for me today. That's no problem, but otherwise, that's generally how you can do your latte. But uh, that pushing action is how you would usually create a leaf. But that's not too bad. Still not a bad latte. It's just my latte art sucks. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's generally how you would use this machine. Um, uh, if you've got any questions, please hit it up on the, on the comments below. Um, yeah, otherwise, I, I, that's how you use the, the Breville machine. One last thing that I will mention, if you're looking to do an Americano, you create your shot like so as I demonstrated before, and then you just add hot water on the side here. Whatever you do for your Americano, don't continue to run water again through the espresso shot because you're gonna get very bitter coffee because you've over extracted your, your grind. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just add the hot water like so to your, to your Americano, for example. Just in there with your cup to the level that you like, the flavor you like, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, thanks for joining me in this demo video. Okay.